Hey guys, how you doing today? My name is C2C and welcome back to Acid Switch. Or if it's your very first time, a very warm welcome and I hope you stick around. Please make sure to subscribe if you enjoy this video. We're going to keep it simple this time and uh, go through an insect tier list video. Basically reacting to it, seeing if I agree with what they're saying. And uh, yeah, cue the intro. Alright, so our tier list today, it looks like, is by a tier zoo. Shout out to y'all. Make sure to subscribe to them if you enjoy this video as well. And let's get right into it. I'm going to try to leave this uncut. Play of the game. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, yeah, this should be fun. I rather enjoy uh, insects and invertebrates lately. factions the game has ever seen. So nowhere else I think this should be quite enjoyable. concentration of abilities that are not only overpowered but also extremely unique. It's tough to even know where to start when talking about what makes insects such a successful group, because in a lot of cases, it's not just that their individual abilities are overpowered, but some of them feel like they should be mutually exclusive, since they're just insanely OP when used in combination with one another. You'll see what I mean once I get into the tier list, but first, a brief overview of the insect faction's general attributes and history. Yeah, I already know. They're about to talk about some, like, if you mix this precise type of camouflage with this weaponry, then you're unstoppable. And it's true. It's true. Insects were added to the game during but they're the insects, so they're like, expansion. only this big, the they're little. Up the atmospheric oxygen level which allowed members of the arthropod faction to adopt larger sizes and more costly abilities. And while most of the arthropod player base was trying to dominate the land by leveling up their size, a small offshoot of the crustacean player base opted to forego the gigantism trait and instead used this oxygen bonus to unlock an ability never before seen in game, flight. Because these new creatures were the very first to gain the ability to fly, the air became entirely oh, their wow. domain for the time being, <laughs> and would remain that way until reptiles unlock the ability several expansions later. Insects are extremely diverse in their abilities and stat spreads. In fact, they're so diverse that it's impossible to include them all in a single video. I'll be keeping things fairly generalized, but truth be told, many of the groups I'll be discussing today have so many standout members that they could easily be an entire team. That is very interesting. The arthropods are, they're alleging, were the only, or the first ones able to fly. Obviously before birds and such. There really aren't that many animals that can fly if you think about it. Um, it would be interesting if there was some sort of invertebrate that could fly before the arthropods that there wasn't fossil remnants of. Like if it was just like a, a jelly-like creature that evolved into like being able to just fly out the atmosphere and evolve into better things <laughs> hopefully hopefully hey it's better than it would have uh, experienced here it would have been probably eaten by people so tearless in and of themselves so it's a little tough to pin down their general attributes but there are a few commonalities being members of the arthropod faction all insects are granted the exoskeletal armor perk, which greatly raises their AC compared to soft-bodied builds of similar sizes, with the only downside being a massive reduction in those same defensive stats for a short time every time the player levels up. This makes insects quite tanky on average, allowing them to excel in combat. The insect build also has access to the compound eyes perk, which grants them vastly improved awareness compared to other arthropods like scorpions and centipedes. With 360 degree vision, their ability to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets while flying is far superior to most other flyers. This enhanced perception perk is important because insects tend to have naturally high stealth, so in order to compete with other insect builds, acute vision is required. We've only just scratched the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to though. For a more in-depth look, let's get into the tier list. 
at the bottom of the tier list, we have the silverfish. Oh, I hate silverfish. The silver silverfish fish. is the most primitive insect build still in existence. Really? It kind of blurs the line between what is and is not considered an insect. I hate them things. Not in a good way. Unlike other flightless insects, which decided to respec and drop the flight ability in favor of more refined strategies, the silverfish build actually never had access to it in the first place. Aside from having an exoskeleton, they don't really have any of the abilities that make insects powerful. They do not have wings and have essentially no combat abilities. They have fairly low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything, with their only useful stat being their decently high movement speed. Their special ability allows them to gain XP from eating cellulose and lignin, meaning they can farm XP from wooden <laughs> Ligma. which normally don't grant any experience. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak combatants, they tend to actually stick to yeah, Ligma. Areas. Oh, that was a good catch. Like paper and cloth in the relative safety of houses, apartments, and office spaces. Even there, they aren't completely safe, though. And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta, the silverfish's extreme lack of useful abilities places it firmly in F tier. Interesting. That's honestly the only insect build I believe deserves an F tier ranking. That's Those very interesting. I would never have thought them. I would have thought they would rank along maybe millipedes, centipedes. Back, even if those things aren't necessarily broken. Something like that. First in D tier, we have the Phasmid build, which includes walking sticks and leaf mimics. These builds sport what are unquestionably some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire game, second only to color changing builds like the octopus and chameleon. As impressive as these are though, the question I constantly end up asking is, is this really necessary? Because with the exception of insects which deliberately lower their stealth as part of the aposomatic coloration strategy, insects as a whole already have an above average stealth, and are usually able to maintain this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. Their camouflage can only take them so far. While they're near undetectable while remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food. And while they do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment where camouflage doesn't match as well, their instincts to sway and move can actually end up giving their position away even more, <laughs> rather than aiding in their attempts to hide. Some phasmids do possess chemical defenses, but as we'll see further up the tier list, this attack is quite mild compared to the heat some other insects are packing. Phasmids have a similar game plan to sloths, complete with all the major flaws this strategy is riddled with. Although at least Phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. <laughs> Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans, the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. At I first glance, that, these may seem like absolute word. bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game nice. when it comes to combat, with extremely squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Many of the larval forms of these builds are 100% defenseless and have a mobility stat in the single digits, literally the freest kills in the game. However, the Lepid player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Caterpillars and adult Lepids alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in, and some designed to intimidate. Granted, that one's strategies pretty cool often don't hold up against like high intelligence builds, but it does help. Some caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses, yeah, like some of them are poisonous, toxins, which make them simply not worth the potential damage to take on. And credit where credit is due, even though they still are fairly defenseless, butterflies and moths do have excellent mobility and can fly much greater distances than most insect builds. Yeah. This enables them to avoid high conflict areas of the map and reach higher quality again like just think about how many animals fly can fly their massive wings and like write them all down like for it's a variety of kind of crazy how many purposes also just make them, them look much not. larger than insects of comparable body sizes which helps dissuade attacks but ultimately leopards still take plenty of l's and most high tier insect builds have quite oppressive matchups against them so they're definitely a below average factor. <laughs> that was cool. That's actually it for D tier, and I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, said, but again, wow. insects are a massively successful faction and are going to be concentrated in the higher tiers. I like how this works. At the bottom of C tier, up. we have the cockroach. The cockroach is the ultimate survivor, which opted <laughs> to spec into mobility, stealth, and a multitude of elemental resistances in lieu of any offensive abilities. While they don't pack much heat, their flat shape allows them to easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather clumsy flyers, 
but they do have an above average ground movement speed, enabling them to quickly oh, scurry to sorry. cover if they see a predator player approaching. However, when caught out in the open or backed into a corner, they're fairly helpless and easily one of the most vulnerable builds in the entire insect faction. They're also somewhat carried by human mains, making temperate and tundra servers viable for them, because really, as impressive as their toxin and radiation resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold, and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans unlocking the fire control ability. The biggest variants may be able to tank one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they fail to outright escape a fight. Next in C tier we have the Earwig, a fearsome looking generalist build which appears to have a giant pair of mandibles on its rear end, called Cersei. As fearsome as these Cersei forceps are, if we actually check the Earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. As menacing as the Cersei are, the actual piercing damage they can deal is fairly minimal, and can even be deflected by the most basic of armor. And even against builds without armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching the Earwig, <laughs> and can attack without restraint. Beautiful Still, just salamander. Because they can doesn't mean they do, as the Ewig's intimidation factor alone is oftentimes I want a enough to protect it from conflict. And credit where credit is due, the forceps are actually fairly decent in matchups. I think I want to get a terrarium set up to carry their targets have, much get, better. See if I can get like some jobs. little dart frogs it in it, like try to breed them. Rear facing weapons instead of the more typical we'll see. forward facing ones. I have a few like projects coming up pet wise. The position does actually serve a purpose in that it allows earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces, where they can hide out and avoid conflict altogether. Of all of the weapons insects have access to, Cersei might be some of the most unorthodox, which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate other players. However, I think to get out of mid-tier, earwigs need to actually have the ability to back up their threat display. They would do well to spec into some sort of venom, Venom-infused stings are a fairly common attribute for insects, so this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So, while certainly a viable mid-tier, don't suck. overestimate this build's abilities. I kind of want to get a tattoo of, of an earwig, low-key. <laughs> we got a lot of those around kids. here. These are the first mobility-centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. Flight is an excellent defensive ability, as it allows the user to get out of reach of an attack's range. But this utility is lessened if their ability to get airborne has too much startup lag. And so instead of using their wings to get themselves up into the air, a powerful jump enables the Arthopteran mains to escape vertically at instant speed. Their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. And because their jump has such excellent frame data, landing an ambush strike on an Arthopteran can feel near impossible at times. And even if a player does manage to secure a grab, their powerful hind legs can function as quite an effective combo break. The spines on their legs augments the damage their kicks can deal, meaning that if a grasshopper can tank the first few hits of an ambush attack, they may be able to turn the tide of a confrontation and escape after dealing serious damage to the attacker. With that said, I think there are a few flaws in their strategy which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. In a similar manner to the flying fish, using such a drastic escape option can sometimes end up putting you in a worse position than you were before. Especially if your local meta has a lot of spider players, and although they do present a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks, and can either tank the damage outright or one-hit the grasshopper before it even has a chance to retaliate. At the bottom of B tier we have the Hemipterans, a diverse order of insects with a few things in common, including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield-shaped. However, the most notable thing is that rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts, the Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, oh. perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. For the majority of Hemipteran builds, this allows them to farm XP from sources that are normally hard to access, like the energy-dense sap inside trees and stems, or the starch inside of seeds. However, there are some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite Those that bugs is able to cool. pierce through armored targets. Those, like, their venom I don't know if that's an assassin bug. Just about any other insect, and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs assassin tend to bug, actually yeah. have fairly low stealth, opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. 
And on top of all that, they have fairly low mobility. Yeah, assassin bugs are usually really cool kind of looking. Difficult if they're you can keep them as pets in little terrariums. I've thought about Some ordering a cool one or something, though, but I don't know. Though, I haven't really looked into them yet. High aquatic mobility. Making them some of the most fearsome aquatic every builds now in the and game. Then. <laughs> On the herbivore side of things, Hemipterans tend to fare a bit worse. They usually still have fairly low mobility and low stealth, oh. and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impenetrable as some of the builds higher on this list. They tend to rely on a chemical defense similar to some phasmids, which is where they get the name stink bugs from. However, similar to phasmids, these defenses also tend to be a bit lacking, and often fail to deter attackers. So certainly a group with some standout members, and fine for XP farming, but still nothing too broken. And topping off B tier we have the Neuroptera, a rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic looking base stats, genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. Mm. However, looking at the final form of this build paints oh. a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, is a brutally effective predator build for any player who prefers the camping playstyle. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Antlions have a devastating, venomous bite, which they use to one-shot unsuspecting players before draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Because of their ability wow. to construct pitfall traps, their passive stealth rating is extremely high making their ambush playstyle unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the prey gets caught in their trap, the antlion even has the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target, making escape a near impossibility. I have an entire video dedicated to the overpowered abilities of Neuropteran larvae, but in short, they are what the earwig pretends to be. If you hmm. took the earwig Circe, put them in front, and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have an antlion. So why the weak adult form? Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form, and really only exist to be a vessel that allows players to find each other and complete the mating questline, something they lack the ability to do in their much less mobile larval form. So while I do think it'd be more <laughs> impressive if they didn't take such a massive cut to their power level during their final level up, there's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an absolute <laughs> What was happen. all that? What? At the bottom of A tier, we have a personal favorite of mine, the Mantis. Mantises have a fairly straightforward playstyle, consisting of slashing and grabbing their targets using powerful spiked raptorial forelimbs. If we take a look at the Mantis' stats, we see that the Mantis has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat similar to that of a walking stick which it desperately needs in order to be able to get within striking range of its targets. Its clumsy flight and slow ground movement speed makes chasing prey basically impossible. However, what they lack in movement speed they easily make up for with strike speed. The Mantis's strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly evasive. As powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't immobilize the target, and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. And while the Mantis's large size enables it to tank most counterattacks, attacking a venomous target can end up being a serious blunder for a Mantis player. So definitely a powerful high tier predator, but not one that's so mm. invincible that Mantis mains can get careless. <laughs> oh man. Oh, Next, he got in tore up. We have the flies. This does get a bit confusing due to the amount of other builds that you use the word fly see who in will be at the top of the list. With this group, the true flies, are defined by a very specific feature. True flies only have two wings. This might seem like a major trade-off, but while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return is more than worth the risk. Instead of a second pair of wings, flies swap them out for halteers, a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them all but impossible to land a hit on midair, and also enables predator fly variants, such as the robber fly, to launch incredibly precise attacks mid-flight, and take down targets that would normally be too powerful to confront head-on, but are unable to effectively counterattack during flight. However, most flies are either scavengers or parasites, using their quick mobility and superior reaction speed to weave past the defenses and avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. 
while they do have an extremely short lifespan, there's no denying that they make the most of the time they do have, and are one of the most efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. But while flies are excellent aerial combatants, they are no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. The Dragonfly is similar to the Crocodile in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever existed in the game. It's already such an efficient build that across several balance patches and game expansions, the Dragonfly has seen very few changes to its core strategy. They simply aren't necessary, as the Dragonfly is already equipped to deal with just about anything the devs throw at it. So what is it about the Dragonfly that has given it such a competitive edge? Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuverability of any build in the game, and the highest top flight speed of any insect. Unlike most insects, dragonflies have specced into the ability to move their wings independently of each other, which grants them the ability to move in any direction without needing to turn and face that direction, meaning they can strafe mid-flight and even fly backwards. This ability makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. So this is a high commitment, high reward playstyle. In order to ensure a proper payoff for their incredible agility, Dragonflies have also specced into what is arguably the best vision of any arthropod, extremely large, high-resolution eyes that take up basically their entire head, granting them full 360-degree vision. This allows them to track all potential targets around them with ease, and allows them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. Unlike many of the other builds on this list, which either have a powerful larval form but a weak adult form, or a powerful adult form that can only achieve this after enduring an extremely vulnerable early game, the Dragonfly is a high-tier predator in both forms. While everyone knows they dominate the skies when they reach their max level, what you might not know is that as nymphs, Dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game, able to wow. one-shot similarly-sized fish and That's amphibian players. Pull. Now, while it was tempting to put Dragonflies in S-tier, they do have a few shortcomings. While they are generally able to see approaching predators before it's too late, they aren't particularly good at avoiding accidentally flying into dangerous situations. Oh, yeah. They are easily trapped by spiderwebs and are often snatched out of the air when flying too close to another player. In addition, dragonflies cannot walk, meaning that their energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they need to reposition themselves. Not that devastating of a weakness, but it's enough that this ancient build can't quite break into S tier. First in S tier we have the Beetle. The Beetle is the epitome of the insect build, a bunch of extraordinarily powerful abilities that seem like they shouldn't really function properly when used in conjunction with each other, yet somehow actually end up synergizing unbelievably well. Beetles are the premier tanks of the insect faction, with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. It has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive ants without taking any damage something that even many reptiles and amphibians can't get away with. Now, typically when a build is heavily invested into defenses like this, it has to make a lot of sacrifices in its other stats. This is the opposite of what we see in the Beetle build, as in addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it also excels in several other metrics. The most obvious of which is its power stat. Beetles can obliterate their enemies in combat using powerful jaws and explosive chemical weapons. Their ability to bulldoze opponents with their forward-facing weaponry is hard to overstate, but in my opinion, their real damage Some potential comes from beetles tail. which possess the ability to blast their attackers with a toxic or acidic chemical burst. But that's not where the craziness stops, because although you'd probably expect a high power tank to be a slow, lumbering build, beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speed of any insect. And if that weren't enough, Despite often having heavy horns or giant mandibles, packing a tank full of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor, and strapped with enough muscle to move objects far, far above their weight class, the beetle is still able to fly without much issue. Now, they did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor, so they can't perform the advanced aerobatics that dragonflies and houseflies can. But the ability to get from point A to point B via flight is still extremely valuable, both for escaping danger and for reaching valuable points of interest. In short, beetles have essentially every ability they could ask for. They are an amalgamation of everything that makes the insect faction so powerful, and so it's no surprise that beetle species comprise a whopping 25% of all species in the game. They're so versatile and adaptable that a beetle player can find a niche in essentially any server. They truly are the ultimate insect and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful abilities is, 
ultimately, the beetle is still lacking the most powerful insect ability of them all, eusociality. Now, I have an entire video dedicated to explaining just how broken this ability is, and there's no question that the insects that incorporate it into their game plan simply dominate all in their path. Oh, like hive, like being now, in a hive. Termites are a variant of the cockroach build, but they have such a unique and powerful playstyle that, that lumping them in with mid tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. The termite queen is the longest lived oh my god in the game, with a lifespan oh my gosh. Of or elephant. And uh. spends these many decades building one of the most powerful armies the game has ever seen. These termite armies are able to construct some of the most well fortified bases in the game, giving even beaver dams and human uh. skyscrapers a run for their money. Not only do they build incredible bases, but termites literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's ability to gather resources. They will pave paths and build ramps and bridges to important resource deposits. This efficiency allows them to support a huge army and command vast territories. Termites, despite being most closely related to cockroaches, have a combat style that is actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which if you've seen my snake tier list, you'd know is also a top tier build. Termites can accurately fire acid from a needle-like horn on their face, wow. doing heavy damage to anything caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws instead of acid sprayers on their head, and are crucial for defending their face from an onslaught of invaders. Termites are a somewhat imbalanced build, with crazy powerful forward-facing weaponry, but extremely vulnerable abdomens with no armor at all. This means that oftentimes, despite a larger size, they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. Aww. Not usually an issue, as termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation which covers the weak points of individual members. So certainly not a bad enough weakness to negate the top tier status of eusociality. But this weakness does mean that I gotta give the top spot to the other eusocial insect faction. Mm. Hymenoptera is the group of insects that includes ants, bees, and wasps. Unlike termites, these insects are a bit more well-rounded having decent armor all over, and tend to have both forward and rear-facing weaponry, with most Hymenopterans packing strong jaws and a venomous stinger. The wasp's signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage on their own intimidation checks. <coughs> Eusocial Hymenopterans can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. They can capture prisoners, cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Ants in particular are masters of both empire building and military tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in their own territory. So while beetles may take up a larger percentage of total insect variants, termites and ants both vastly outnumber any other insect build. Yeah. And while I don't base my tier lists purely off of population, Yitty. there's no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredibly powerful strategies and their ability to bend their environment to their advantage. In fact, the only genuine threats to you social players tend to be invaders disguising themselves as members of their own colony, but are really there to disrupt, steal, and attack. Many spider, hemiptera, and mantis mains adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. Something similar happens when you browse the internet without using NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. As you browse, trackers latch onto your system and follow you from one page or access re- that's So lovely. if it's not right, good luck out there. All right, well, that's all they got. But yeah, make sure to subscribe to uh, Tier Zoo. And, uh, yeah, I thought that was quite enjoyable. Let me see. They had, let me, let me find it here. They had, um, pretty much an on point list. I thought they were going to have isopods in there, even though, because the isopods are crustaceans. So I'm glad they didn't have them on here, but I thought they would have them on here, but I'm glad they didn't because they would have been like down low on like F tier because they just have like some camouflage in different variations and colors, but that's about it. They would have been with the silverfish, but overall pretty well on point. I think cockroaches should have been a little bit higher up um, for their intelligence 
and um, they are a bit more social and colony uh, dwelling and um, they've also their survival rate over time and then be I thought beetles having beetles in S tier I mean I get it but if you're gonna have dragonflies in A tier I don't know I feel like I feel like there were a couple I would change but just let me know what you would say or what you would change in the comments I'm probably about to call it a night I'm getting rather tired but I really appreciate it if you joined me and if you made it this far make sure to subscribe